Everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. And goodness me, have we not almost witnessed the upset of the year and what could have been an all-time great test match. Australia coming within three points of beating New Zealand and getting a chance at the Bledisloe Cup. Um, having to, uh, well, a bit of a controversial call right at the end. The, uh, almost the difference considering the fact that Australia had a one-man advantage and were on the, the front foot. Had a penalty shout uh, turned down in the final minute uh, b before having a scrum, which New Zealand then kicked it out with the final score ending uh, 31 points to 28. And uh, what a comeback it was from Australia, who were down 14 points to nil in within the first 10 minutes. It was a horrendous start from the home side, but uh, they managed to sort of start getting into it. And once again... New Zealand not scoring any points in the final quarter. I think that's five games in a row. They've not managed it. 28 points to 31. They scored just three points in the second half. And uh, I think if you're a New Zealand fan, lots to be worried about with regards to that bench and just there being no impact. You know, it's it's like this case of can they, can they like, you know, can, can they basically get it far enough ahead where it's impossible to to catch because if not, then it's it's not it's not enough. It really isn't enough. And, and I think until they solve that problem, a lot of teams are going to back themselves and fancy themselves against Australia. This is a, a, I mean against New Zealand. This is an Australian side who have just been hammered a record defeat at the hands of Argentina in the last few weeks, and now they've just pitched up. They've gone behind, well behind as well. Uh, it really was, you know, not not good. Uh, I mean, you look at the the timing over here, and um, they were they they conceded fourteen points. Let me not lie to you. They were twenty one points to the nil at fifteen minutes, you know. And at twenty one points to nil, you think that's the game done. And at one point, at twenty eight points to seven, at twenty fifth twenty five minutes, and and from Australia point of view you sitting at 28 points to seven down 21 points behind thinking well how do we get back into this well they scored more points in in the second half well more than points you know the two tries to just the penalty from new zealand new zealand pressure conceded two yellow cards and joe schmidt uh, he's talking to rob Bantini and, and andrew Kellaway as i'm watching here almost a bit of a wry smile on his face because i think he's sitting there thinking this team can be beaten, this Australian, this New Zealand side. And obviously next week, you know, they'll go to New Zealand and life will get a lot more difficult. But I think there's a couple of smiles around this Australian uh, uh, camp because I think that they've just realized today that they can compete. And this is why it's been a bit of a weird year for Australia rugby because they beat a, a poor Welsh side. They didn't beat Australia, I mean Argentina, in Argentina, but then got hammered and they were... 21 points down within 50 minutes against New Zealand and lost by just three points where they had the momentum towards the end. So I don't think that they'll actually be as upset as, as, as um, you know, maybe they should be or could be because they will have seen that they, they can be competitive. And I mean, look, what a day as well for James Slipper. So horrible that he did go off injured, but he is, I mean, he became the most capped wallaby of all time today and what a what a way it would have been i mean had they gotten over the line and they had the momentum then it could have been one of the most historic wins you know from a a a, a significance of the game in terms of james slippers you know most cap time to beat a uh, new zealand uh, australian side that's struggling you know to give them a chance of winning the better cup for example it could have been epic it was epic to be fair it was absolutely epic regardless um and i think in many ways australia will probably be the happier of the sides because they will look at that and say, listen, this is a, a New Zealand side who is considered the second or third best team in the world, was in the World Cup final last year. We are a growing side and yet we've got toe to toe with them and um, could have actually got the job done. Scott Robertson, I don't think the pressure is going anywhere because there's been a lot of talks about his selection, about the bench not being good enough and about not being able to finish off games. And that has not been put to bed today. That's the thing. More questions have come than, than answers from New Zealand side. Now, if you look at some of the stats, for example, um, in Australia said piece, the scrums weren't probably good enough. Um, you know, 75%, New Zealand 71%, but uh, scrum 
Uh, penalties far more for New Zealand. The lineups as well from Australia are not good enough. 75%. You, you've got to have a functional set piece. That's a massive area they've got to work on. I mean, they had a great try from Fraser McWright off the back of a lineout, but in general, the set piece just didn't quite function. Uh, similarly, you know, possession, they, they, I mean, they had 80% in the last 10 minutes, but they had basically didn't touch the ball for the first 20. Uh, apart from that discipline, I think, from Australia in the first half was pretty poor, but then discipline in the second half when New Zealand was also poor. So it's, it's, that's an interesting side of it. So stats why there's not actually a lot that, that separates the two teams. Uh, in terms of some big performances, Harry Wilson leading from the front, you know, carried quite strongly. I just feel that they're missing a couple of enforcers are Australia. They need a couple of players to get on the front foot and to try and dominate. And because that, I think, you know, if you dominate up front, you can slow down the New Zealand attack. And, and that was the issue in the first half. They had no ways of slowing down a New Zealand attack that was relentless, you know, that was just hammering away at the Wallabies over and over again. And they just didn't have anything to try and uh, and stop that. So very, very interesting game. We'll obviously be able to sort of dissect this a bit more in the next few days. But I think Joe Schmidt will be happy with that. I think Scott Robertson is going to be asked a couple of very big questions in this post-match press, uh, press conference. And I think it is warranted. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well on the, on the road to 80,000 subscribers. And uh, let me know what you think is going to happen um, down the line with the Australian side. Can they be competitive? Is this a really poor New Zealand side? What is the barometer? Let me know down in the comments below.